Claudia Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, September 22nd to Saturday, September 28th. So last week we were wrapping up Virgo season. We were also wrapping up Venus's time in her rulership in Libra energy. And of course, the major event that we all experienced was that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy that popped off on the 17th. We're still very much under that eclipse influence. We will continue to be for some weeks to come. But this week, we are definitely going to be in for some roller coaster rides. Reason being, first of all, we're wrapping up the last full week in September that had a particular vibration and life lesson. If you want to go back and listen to September's energy intro, you can really kind of explore whether or not you aligned with that particular life lesson or not. But mostly, we're moving through the X. Equinox Gateway here this week. We have the sun moving into Libra season on the 22nd, which of course triggers the equinox. The equinox is the particular point in the calendar where there is equal day to equal night. And karmically speaking, the equinox tends to help us balance out those karmic scales. I don't think it's going to go so smoothly this year mostly because we're under the influence of eclipse energy. We'll talk about that when we get going here. But nonetheless, it is going to be a major shift in the energies. And we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who will be in her rulership over Libra season, leaving Libra energy for Scorpio energy just hours after Libra season actually begins. So that's going to be quite a jam in itself, if I do say so myself. We actually have the last quarter moon popping off this week, which is going to be taking place in Cancer energy. Now, Cancer rules over the moon. And, you know, the moon and her rulership and cancer energy were really kind of reflecting back to cancer season when we have that summer solstice, which absolutely kicked off the karmic purging that we've been doing since that particular chapter, that particular season. We are going to take a good look back. There's a reflection energy taking over, which, of course, cancer energy always has us looking back in the past. But we are definitely in an elimination, a closure, a completion cycle at this particular juncture. And emotionally speaking, we are definitely going to be defragging a lot of the energy that we've been holding on to since the beginning of cancer season. We also have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, moving out of his rulership in Virgo energy, and he will be shifting into Libra energy here on the 26th. So we still have a lot to experience, a lot to kind of move through. Again, I'm going to recommend, if you haven't already, to take a listen to your September zodiac forecast, your sun, your moon, your rising, to understand where these particular energy shifts are going to impact and influence your life the most. I am going to recommend that you listen to all the astro forecasts, that you listen to all of the energy shift events that I've put out there. There's like a million resources for you to stay ahead of the game. And I'm really going to recommend you do that because we are in a very interesting time in the astrology calendar where you're going to want to capture what is going on. We're going to need to reflect back to these particular points in time in the months to come. So, of course, uh, you know, moving into a Libra season, there's a Libra season e-guide for your, let's call it energetic alignment pleasure. And we definitely need to kind of put all the pieces together and understand that this is not going to be a typical Libra season. This is not going to be a typical equinox balancing out. And we are definitely going to have to get comfortable in riding the wave. So we're going to talk about all of those things a little bit more in depth and in detail here in just a second. But first of all, I have to just cross a couple of things off of my homework list. First of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for subscribing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below, making it a very beautiful channel to actually scroll through. I just want to thank you for the continued love and support. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon. Even as a free member, at least you're getting the notifications over there that YouTube doesn't give you over here because YouTube is not our friend. And I just want to thank those of you that have commented on the new vibe of my videos. I thought it was time for a change. 
especially under that full moon lunar eclipse and Pisces energy. It was just time to kind of let some things go, remove and eliminate some of those things in order to kind of bring a new cycle into play. And of course, we're talking about the new cycle that we're going to be experiencing from now until 2027. And I just felt called uh, due to some of the aspects in my personal chart that it was time to kind of spice things up just a tad. And so for those of you that uh, have sent me some love, about the new look. I want to thank you so much for that. Um, I do have to talk about this for just a second. Last week, um, I was really trying to promote that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy. I had a whole eclipse edition episode. It's an astro class that originally I released on my Patreon that I thought because so many people here on YouTube are just resisting moving over to Patreon that I would reactivate the membership type of section here on YouTube and that I would offer that paid content under a membership type of tier. Well, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that I tried this membership thing before and it absolutely destroyed my channel, absolutely destroyed my algorithm. But I tried it again, just thinking that, you know, maybe something would be different. Maybe something would change. And here I am a week after I activated that membership that nobody signed up to. I have now deleted it. It has just caused so much dysfunction in my channel, in my views, in my ad space that it just, to me, was not worth it. So I did cancel that membership tier. However, you can purchase those episodes individually now on my Patreon. So if you're just interested in the eclipse energies and you know that particular moon guide, you don't necessarily have to become a membership over on Patreon in order to access it anymore. You can download them individually. And first of all, let me just say I appreciate each and every single one of you, but even over on my Patreon where I have over 200 paid subscribers, only two people showed up for my eclipse edition live chat. And I'm super grateful for those two individuals. But outside of that, I got to tell you guys, I am severely, severely disappointed with all the energy and effort that I'm putting in to trying to keep you guys ahead of the game. And then nobody shows up. Nobody just seems like they care anymore to do the work. I don't know if y'all know this, but like y'all are running out of time. And I'm not just saying it because I'm trying to push and promote, you know, the things that pay my bills. A lot of this is not equaling out to a good return on investment for me. Okay, I spend a lot of time making these videos. I spend a lot of time putting out content. I constantly get asked, especially over on my Patreon, why I'm not putting out as much information and content as I used to. And realistically, it's because I'm disappointed every single time that I put my heart and soul um, and like an hour and a half into recording and then eight hours in order to make the video and then nobody shows up. I, I, I just, I don't know what to do anymore. There are like a handful of you brilliant, brilliant, beautiful people that continue to reassure me that the work that I'm doing here is, is, you know, valuable and is helping people. I got to be honest with you. I, I don't see it. I don't see it as of late. I don't see the commitment. I don't see the investment that people are making within themselves. Um, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed and not really sure what to do to kind of, you know, get people engaged again. Uh, can't, can't do any more than what I've been doing, but as of late, what I have been doing has been not really kind of showing up in my life the way that I want. So every single time that I say, guys, you know, I think I'm going to pull back from YouTube because not getting the views, not getting the support, you know, not even getting paid for it the way that I once was. Uh, and then everybody freaks out. Oh, please, please don't leave YouTube. Please don't leave YouTube. And then I continue to pour my heart and soul into it, get less and less views, get le less and less support. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I thought that moving over to Patreon and at least giving the people that were truly interested in this content, truly interested in doing this work, a little bit of a community where, you know, we're all there, we're all talking, we're all supporting one another. I thought that would be the way to go. But then again, I gave up like, you know, an hour and a half on my live chat for two people. And I'm not saying that it wasn't worth it for those two people, but out of 200 people on my Patreon and then 
out of those 200 people, 20 people said that they were going to attend. And out of those 20 people, only two people showed up. It's like, why bother? Why freaking bother? So I will say, I know I'm being a little bit of a negative Nancy and I am really apologetic about that, but I have to vent and I have to show my frustration, um, which I think I do quite often, to be honest. Um, But yeah, this last eclipse edition, you know, it's an hour and a half of content that is going to majorly be affecting and influencing your life from now until 2027. And a fraction of people actually showed interest in it. And that is absolutely heartbreaking. I definitely have to step back in this Libra season, in this eclipse energy, really reevaluate how much time, energy and effort I'm willing to put in to guiding the collective when the collective ain't even showing up. So anyways, that's my rant about that. But nonetheless, I just wanted to let you know that there will not be a membership opportunity here on YouTube. And, you know, I really have to kind of think about what I'm doing over there on Patreon as well. Um, So I just wanted to thank those of you that did show up. I want to thank those of you that continue to give me the love and support that continue to show up and do the work because that's really all I care about. I'm here on a soul contract on a life mission to help the collective. And it's been a struggle. It's been like pulling teeth, if you will, to get people to actually do the work. Anywho, this week... We got a lot going on this week. I will also be working on the October Zodiac forecast that, of course, will be available this time next week for your listening pleasure. And again, you can access all 12 on my Patreon or you can pay for them individually from my website. Hopefully we will have a little bit more of an interest, more of an investment on the collector's part as we move through what is going to be a very turbulent October. So hopefully all the information that I jam pack in those forecasts will be uh, something of interest and will be continued to be accessed throughout the month of October. I will also be opening up my October calendar at the end of next week. First of all, for my VIPs on Patreon, that will go live October 1st for the public. So if you do want to book a one-on-one session with me, I would definitely recommend to keep your eye on that snag a spot before they're all kind of booked up. They do go relatively quick. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's jump into some ascension symptoms that we will likely experience throughout the course of this week. So again, I just want to remind you, because again, didn't have very many people show up to my Eclipse Edition episode. Eclipse energy means that we're being blocked out of something. And we're being blocked out of the Virgo energy on the Virgo and Pisces axis at this particular juncture under that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. And so what does that mean? Well, the Virgo energy is the physical realm, the materialistic realm, the matter of fact, the truth of, you know, our lives. The Pisces energy is very delusional, very confusing, very spiritual in nature, but very fantasy like. And so what we're being eclipsed out of at this particular point in time is the truth is the details that we currently feel like we need before we can make an informed decision. And the matter of fact, and this is why I said in that episode, and I will say it again here, just when you think that you have an aha moment, that you have a good idea, that you understand the plan, the direction that you want to go in, no, you don't. Okay? No, you don't. You will not fully understand the scope of the picture, the matter of fact, the plan, the path, the strategy until post eclipse season, which technically is going to carry us into the end of October. Now, yes, there are hints and clues being gifted to us along the way. It's not going to take, you know, the bulk of October for us to figure some things out. But until the eclipse dissipates and we actually see the truth, we actually see the matter of facts, we actually see the details of the information that we're lacking, we see the plan, the direction, the path moving forward. Until we see all that, you're just guessing. And you need to be leaning more into not knowing and being comfortable with not knowing versus needing to know the whole freaking plan before you make a choice or make an action or make a step in a different direction. You will not understand the big picture for weeks, if not months to come. And because we're in a closure series, a completion series at this particular juncture, there's not as much new coming into our lives as we wish that there would be at this particular juncture. This is like, uh, I'm going to say it this way. 
This is like recognizing what we have to eliminate, what we have to let go of, what we have to release, what we have to close the door on. And as we do that, we're left with a space that we can stand back and say, hmm, what would be better for this particular space? Where could I make improvements? Again, Virgo energy. Where can I make adjustments in order to have a better life, a better realm, a better reality? But again, we're not thinking clearly. And as we watch Mercury shift into Libra energy here on the 26th this week, we are going to be on the fence, hella indecisive about everything. An interesting little tidbit of information here. The moon shifts into Gemini energy before the sun shifts into Libra energy. The Gemini energy is hella indecisive on the fence, weighing pros and cons. Libra energy, hella indecisive on the fence, weighing pros and cons. We also have Jupiter in Gemini energy, again, on the fence, weighing the pros and cons of our growth, of our evolvement, of the options and opportunities for us to grow, for us to evolve, for us to move on. And so, again, we're eclipsed from the truth. We're eclipsed from the matter of fact. We're eclipsed from the details that we're currently lacking right now, even though you're going to get a little bit of a hint and a clue and suddenly think, oh, I have all the information I need. All these puzzle pieces are snapping together quite nicely. No, they are not. We have to go through a new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. OK, that's going to be taking place on the second. Um, that will essentially kind of put us in a totally different space, different ball game, if you will, because karmically speaking, the Pisces energy of the full moon lunar eclipse is removing people out of our lives, moving into Libra season. That is very relationship focused. Soul contracts are up for renewal. We're going to have people coming and going. There are going to be people that have been in your life for quite some time that you're never going to see again. And flip side, you're going to have a space, a void from some of these people leaving that suddenly somebody crosses your path. You feel like you've known them for years and they stick around for the years to come because they are a part of the new path, new purpose, new vibration, new frequency of the new version of self that we've been slowly but surely anchoring in. So the reason why I want to remind you that we're being eclipsed from the truth, we're being eclipsed from the path, eclipsed from the details, the information that we currently feel that we need is because we're about to get a lot of information thrown at us starting this week that, again, is going to make us feel like we're fully equipped, fully prepared to make a choice, to make a decision. You are not. OK, we're not in control. We're not in power. Eclipse season. Universe is in control. The universe is in power. We are about to be karmically sorted out and put on the path that we failed to put ourselves upon. We haven't even had the new moon, solar eclipse and Libra energy yet. Again, lunar takes away and subtracts. Solar adds, okay, emphasizes, spotlights. And in Libra and energy, it has everything to do with the relationship that we're building within ourselves and the relationship that we're cultivating with other people. And because we are still under this eclipse energy, karma is at play. Soul contracts need to be rewritten. Some of them need to be void. Some of them need to be terminated. Some of them need to be renewed and reviewed. And we haven't even dipped ourselves into that. And a lot of the plans that we think that we have right now for our future selves are including people that may not be around. So when I say to you, just when you think that you have a plan, a vision, an understanding of where it is that you need to go, you need to step back and act as the observer because you do not and you will not for weeks to come. So with that being said, moving into Libra season, first of all, it's a cardinal air energy. We're coming out of a mutable earth energy in Virgo season. Mutability means that we were presented with information and details that support us in making some changes, some transformations, some adjustments in our physical realm, in our mental plane, in our heart space, in order for us to solidify, stabilize our physical realms. Cardinal energy follows mutable energy because now that we have the information available to us, the cardinal energy allows us to initiate. The cardinal seasons are also on the same calendar, if you will, with the change of seasons, meaning Aries season, the beginning of the astrological calendar, kicks off with the spring equinox. We have cancer season, summer solstice. We have Libra season that we're moving into, which is the fall equinox. 
And then we have Capricorn season, which of course is the winter solstice and all of those pivotal points, because again, we're just mapping out the strength of the sun. That's basically where we're at on the, uh, the axis of the equinox. There's, you know, whole, whole vibe there, a whole scientific analogy there, but basically it falls with the change of season. When there's a change of season, there's a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of path a change in direction. And so we are about to move into a season where everything is going to change. But the problem of it is, and I don't know that it's necessarily a problem, but if this was just a normal Libra season, if this was just a normal equinox, we would see the effects relatively quick, relatively soon, because we're being eclipsed under this particular gateway. We are not going to see the absolute rebalancing of those karmic scales until post eclipse season. So we're in for a change of mind. We're in for a change of heart. We're in for a change of plans and we're in for a change in our path and in our direction. And because Libra season is about finding peace and harmony and balance in the, let's call it karmic scales. Uh, we tend to find that grounding point through the experience of extremes and because we're not in power and control under the eclipse energy right now, the extremes are going to be hella extreme until this eclipse energy comes to pass. Because it's an air energy, we're definitely going to feel lighter and brighter, I would say. Just because, again, the Virgo energy being an earth sign, we're very present in the physical form. We're very aware of the problematic situations and circumstances that are in existence. Because, again, the whole point of Virgo season is to identify the problem in order to fix it, heal it, repair it. In order to understand where it is that we have to change our perspective, change our understanding, change our ability to see where we could make some adjustments in order to actually improve our situation, our circumstance, our scenarios. This is about, again, our overall health and wellness, especially when it comes to the mental plane, because the Virgo energy, although an earth energy, is ruled over by Mercury. And of course, Mercury spent the better part retrograde. He just came out of his retrograde. He was back in his rulership. We started putting the pieces together. Then we dove into eclipse season. We only had about a week of clarity. We dove into eclipse energy. Now we're diving into equinox energy. We're still in the eclipse energy and we are not going to see clearly, not going to feel clearly, not going to understand ourselves clearly until eclipse season comes to pass. But that air energy takes us out of the physical body. Now we're moving up to the head space. We are definitely putting boundaries into place so that we can stay in the shallow end of our thoughts, of our emotions, of our circumstances. Again, Libra and energy, we love, love. We want everybody to get along. We want everybody to be happy. We want everybody to be peachy keen. We want to focus on the rainbows and butterflies, but that is just one part of the scale. The other part of the scale is going through some turbulent energies and epiphanies that we are going to do our best to keep under the surface of our awareness. But again, we can only prolong that situation and circumstance for so long, then we get thrown into Scorpio energy. And that is where we do the shadow work. That is where we kind of defrag from the, let's call it compartmentalized parts of self and where we merge whatever parts are left over back into a place of wholeness. And that's when the major change, the major transformation, not only in our soul and our spirit takes place, but we actually see that physical change in our physical realm and reality. The air energy just has us kind of up in our head space. And because of that, there's likely going to be a lot of, I'm going to call it pressure in the head, but it's not really pressure as much as it is a lot of things bouncing around. And especially, yes, Libra season is going to throw us into that. We've already been into that, trying to figure out what to do, where to go, how to go forward from here. But when Mercury moves into the Libra energy and we see both sides of the coin and we can weigh the pros and cons and we find ourselves stuck on the fence of indecision, we're definitely going to feel hella confused, bringing a lot more attention to our headspace. It's almost as if there's going to be a multitude of windows open, there's songs, there's music, there's things popping up on the screen, and we just don't know how to close all of these windows fast enough. So although we're trying to keep a lighter, brighter mentality and disposition, there's a lot of heaviness that we are going out of our way to ignore, to avoid, to keep under the surface of our awareness. Many of us wear a very fake facade in labor and energy. We do have to learn how to drop the mask and lean into what is real 
and raw and authentic, but of course we're not going to until the end of Libra season. And we're definitely going to be overwhelmed with all of those intensities once we're flung into Scorpio season. So the lighter vibe is a little bit Delulu. And as we've been kind of talking about that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces that we had, we are still very much in it. It is very Delulu all in itself. The Libra energy is definitely going to add to that. We're a little bit ditzy, a little bit spacey, a little bit aloof, if you will, in Libra energy. And um, we're really just going to have a hard time kind of accepting things as they are instead of the way that we wish that they would be and you know that particular delusion is going to add to our confusion and we are going to be again experiencing a very intense roller coaster of thoughts and emotions and circumstances especially while we're still in this eclipse energy so we have to kind of remind ourselves um, that the clarity is going to be delayed, that the peace, the harmony, the balance is going to be delayed. And we have to understand that the majority, even though air energy has us all up in our headspace, the majority of the confusion is actually going to stem from the heart space. Why? Well, because Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she rules over this Libra season. And she is all about relationships. She's all about her own happiness. She's all about her safety and security. She's all about her goals. And right now we're having a major change of heart. Again, Venus has been in her rulership and Libra energy for the past month-ish. But we have been under some very intense influences. And especially under Virgo season, we're illuminated to what isn't working so well, what isn't going so well, what doesn't feel so good, especially in relation to the relationships that we have been kind of pouring into. We've already had a certain level of awareness of who and what needs to stay and need to go. But of course, in that Libra energy, we don't want to be the bad guy. We don't want you know, to rock the boat. We don't want to poke the bear. And so we've been keeping a lot of these realizations to ourselves. And so now moving into Libra season, we are going to go out of our way to try and ensure ourselves and everyone else that everything is fine. Okay, everything is fine. Everything's fine. The world is crashing. The world is burning around us, but everything is fine. That is very much the Libra disposition. We're going to go out of our way to try and convince ourselves and other people that everything is fine. That's delusional. Okay. Um, the heart activations that we are going to be having, again, heart activations, um, you can have heart flutters, a regular heartbeat, you could have indigestion, you could have acid reflux, there could be, you know, flutters in the heart, there could be uh, a pain in your overall chest area, hard to breathe, if you will, you could experience it in your back and between your shoulder blades, which is highly suggestive that there are past issues, past karma that need to be acknowledged and integrated before you're going to feel that alleviation of your heart space. But there's a lot of heart activations taking place in order for us to actually get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves in what we actually need to do. Reminder, Venus moves into Scorpio energy hours after the sun moves into Libra season and she starts her rulership over Libra season. She is doing a deep dive in the shadow work. She is doing a deep dive in the deepest, darkest parts of herself where she recognized her wants, her needs, her desires, and equally her fears, her doubts, and insecurities of holding her back. The Scorpio energy is very extreme, very intense, very all-consuming, if you will. We want a level of connection, of intimacy, of soul merging type of interactions that we just aren't getting from the people that we've been pouring into. And that in itself is going to put into major perspective whether or not we want to continue cultivating some particular relationship dynamics that we currently have in existence, but realistically speaking, while we're still in this eclipse energy, it's not up to you. People will be removed out of your path if they're not meant for this next chapter and people will be injected into your life if those are the people needed for this next chapter. And everybody thinks that when new people arrive, that it is a good thing. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes the people that are entering in your realm rub you the wrong way because they're mirroring back to you the parts of you that you haven't dealt with that you haven't even acknowledged. And so, you know, new characters on a set, just think of a movie, right? When a new character walks in, sometimes they're the shit disturber. 
Sometimes they are the enemy, not saying that that's going to happen for everyone. But I just think that we have a little bit of a tendency to think that new people entering our life for this karmic chapter for this new chapter, that they essentially have to be good, that they have to be encouraging, they have to be supportive. A lot of the times, yes, that is the case. And of course, that's what we would hope and wish for. But a lot of the times you have currently surrounded yourself with the people that make you feel comfortable, which means that they're likely not mirroring back to you the deepest, darkest parts within yourself because you find that so uncomfortable, you wouldn't continue to have those types of people around you. And so again, because we're coming to the very ending of this chapter of this of this karmic chapter, again, I don't know if you understand the intensity of what's going on here, but moving into 2025, having Neptune and Saturn move into Aries energy, the delusion will be over in such a sobering time that people are going to lose their shit. Okay, we've been living in la la land, people, we've been living in Delulu land. And let me just tell you that we're in the year of eight. This is about power and control over the mind, over your emotions, over your physical body, over yourself, over the program, over the conditioning. Many people are sleeping on themselves. Many people not doing the work. And so there is going to be a last hurrah from the cosmos to send in people that will trigger and activate the shit out of you so that you start doing the work in an accelerated boot camp training program ish. Okay. We have a lot of time to make up for if you're just getting started in this healing journey, you're going to feel very pressurized because we are running out of time. And I'm not saying that in a fear mongering sense, but if you don't get your shit together, you will not activate your creator abilities. You will not be co-creating this new earth with the collective, and you will have to sit on the bench and just go along with what other people are creating for you. And so, you know, where the soul contracts are up for review, renewal, and in some cases termination, and in some cases initiation under this particular karmic influence, especially moving into Libra season, you best believe that there are going to be people in your life mirroring back to you the parts that you've avoided within yourself. That's the whole point. And with Venus in that Scorpio energy, we're ready to do the work. We're ready to do the deep dive. It's just the shallowness that tends to kind of dominate in Libra season and the delusion from the Pisces energy and the Libra energy. Now there's going to be a lot of avoidance, a lot of escapism, and that is not doing anyone any favors. So that indecision is going to lead to an extra layer of confusion and delusion. What do I do? What should I do? What, sh where should I go? Here's the thing about Libra energy. We look outside of ourselves for external validation or confirmation. Okay, that is going against the relationship that you should be building within yourself. You should not need anyone else's a sounding board. You should not need anybody's thoughts or opinions or perspective on what it is that you need to be doing for yourself. Because let me tell you, they do not have your best interest at heart. You have to start trusting yourself. You have to start listening to yourself. You have to start trusting your own damn intuition and the universal guidance that is being provided for you to you each and every single day. The Libra energy is definitely going to, I'm going to say, put a lot of people back on their codependent bullshit that we've been trying to heal, to rectify, to grow through while the nodes of the moon have been on this Aries and Libra and Axis, a lot of people are going to take such a huge step back that they're not going to be able to recover this particular point and position in time for where the karmic chapters are actually shifting. I feel like especially, you know, a, a lot of people don't do well under cancer energy, especially when the moon is in our rulership in cancer energy, which we do have this last quarter moon popping off in cancer energy. A lot of people don't do well. A lot of people get really mopey, very depressed. Um, you know, typically speaking, we hold on to the past. Typically speaking, we don't want to make changes. Typically speaking, we tend to convince ourselves to settle so that we don't have to do the hard thing, which happens to be the right thing, which is to cut people off, and move away and do what is right for us. There's going to be major, major circumstances pop off this week um, when this particular energy happens. We have the last quarter moon taking place in Cancer Energy on the 24th. And let me just say that I expect, because we're in eclipse season, because we're in Libra season, because there is a residual energy effect from this time last year when shit hit the fan in the Middle East, 
uh, I feel that a lot of information, a lot of misinformation, a lot of legalities, a lot of justice issues, a lot of information is going to come at us this week that is going to put some people over the edge. We talked about this before. We're in the stage of spiritual psychosis. We're in the stage of a huge wave of people actually leaving this earth, whether it be by their own hand or other circumstances. And I just feel that this week, again, those karmic scales are going to be so far out of balance and so far into extremes that we are going to see major, major circumstances be highlighted on the greater, grander global stage. Uh, let's talk about some physical aspects. I kind of ranted and raved in order to kind of, you know, paint the picture of the energy here. I feel like, first of all, our sensory disposition is going to be kind of all over the place, meaning, um, you know, psychic abilities get activated under that full moon, lunar eclipse in Pisces. We still haven't anchored it in. We still fully don't understand what that even meant for us. We won't really be able to understand it until, you know, many weeks to come. But there's a certain level of sensitivity that is definitely taking over our physical form. We're going to be more sensitive to light. We're going to be more sensitive to sound, more sensitive to smell. You know, all the five, well, five senses in the body, six, if, if you have that, you know, intuition, third eye open, but everything is getting jacked up. Now it's going to go fully extreme one day. And then we're going to feel so cut off, so disconnected, so detached from all of that the next day. Why? Because we're going to be in Libra season. It's about exploring the extremes in order to find a sweet spot. And so, you know, the whole five senses smells are going to be intense. A lot of smells from the past triggering um, different thoughts, different memories, different, you know, emotions from the past, especially in a context of relationship dynamics. Smells are going to throw us for a loop. Light sensitivities, definitely different. Um, I'm going to say hues of the light spectrum being a little bit more dominant than they have been in the past. That's just an indicator where it is that you're at holding the energy, holding the vibration, holding electricity in your physical form. Sounds are going to feel very weird, meaning it sounds like it's coming from your external realm, but it also sounds like it's coming from inside your head. There is a little bit of an interdimensional bleed taking place because of this eclipse energy, because of this equinox energy, just because of where it is that we're at in this evolutionary period of ascension. And so the sounds are going to feel very strange. Um, you may actually hear people calling out your name, and I'm going to use a little bit of a cautionary note. Uh, we don't necessarily want to investigate those particular voices, okay? Not all voices are good voices, especially when they're calling your name, especially if they're coming from outdoors and especially if they're coming from a dark place in the woods. We do not want to invest investigate that. OK, but nonetheless, uh, not all situations and circumstances are bad in that regard, but you do have to trust your gut. And if you're not doing the work and you haven't built the relationship within yourself and you don't trust your intuition, I would not be dabbling in supernatural experiences, if you haven't done the work to anchor in your authentic vibration within yourself, okay, that is how you get in trouble. Anywho, everything is going to be enhanced. And I feel like it's being enhanced, again, to an extreme, in order for us to be like, woo, can't function that way, we need to kind of, you know, rein it all in, we need to pull back on it. And then, you know, we go to the other opposite side of the spectrum where we don't feel our intuition. We don't feel connected at all. We almost feel like we're, you know, burnt out in our sensory input and in our sensory understanding. But with that being said, uh, our eyes, and as we've been talking about, especially last week, our eyes have been taking a little bit of a hit because we've been having a hard time seeing the way forward, let alone, you know, focusing in on the actual factual uh, proof, life, reality of it all. I feel like because Libra energy really likes to, you know, focus on the rainbows and butterflies, we're going to be more oriented, if you will, to seeing the good, seeing the good in ourselves, seeing good in the people around us, seeing the beautiful things in life, in our environment, in our circumstances. Again, uh, sometimes Delulu is the Salulu when you need to focus on the positives and you need to kind of ignore the negatives. I feel like we've done enough identifying the negatives and we've done enough identifying what isn't working through a Virgo season that the minute that we jump into Libra season, we need to go balls to the walls, identifying all the good, all the things that we are super grateful for, all the things that are working to our favor, all the things that are pleasant 
to our physical experiences. We really need to double down on that. I do feel though, just think of it this way, there's a lot of air, right? We haven't had a lot of air in the cosmos. We're moving into a time where we're moving out of the earth energy. We're going to be moving more into the air energy and earth energy and air energy are the furthest elements away from each other. We have fire and water that bridges the gap between earth and air. And so the dramatic let's call it shift that takes place when we're leaving all the earth energy behind and we get kind of catapulted into the air energy that can be very disorienting. Not only that, think of air. Air is going to dry us out. Okay. So we're talking dry eyes, talking dry lips, dry skin, dry sinuses, especially, you know, third eye relates to the sinuses. Uh, not saying that we have the clarity that we need, that we want at this particular point in time, but we're like, we're really straining to see the good. We're really straining to focus on the positives. We're straining, squinting, if you will, to see if that's a hint or a clue. And because of that, our eyeballs are going to dry out hella quick. The lip energy we hold a lot of tension in our mouths, especially with, you know, using our voice and communicating. Well, here's the thing, especially once Mercury moves into Libra energy, we're all going to be chatty Cathy's, but we're so shallow and superficial with what it is that we're talking about, that the truth of the matter, the mission, the meaning, the purpose stays kind of repressed in our throat. And so, you know, the air energy definitely going to dry our throat. So you may even get so dry in the back of your throat that it gets itchy and it feels like you need to swallow your own tongue in order to kind of scratch that itch, if you will. But that in itself is going to put us in a situation where the teeth sweaters, tooth sweaters, the mouth film, the morning breath sensation is going to be sticking with us through the majority of the day. I feel like the dryness of the skin is also a semi good indicator because again, dryness usually means itchy and itchy usually means healing. Uh, but the dryness is definitely going to change our skin, change the way that we feel inside of our meat suits. And because again, we are trying to avoid the depth, the complexities of our inner realm workings and of our external situations, we're trying to stay very shallow about it. So you may have a rash that just, you know, erupts on your skin, you're scratching it and it's itchy and it's all you can think about, but yet you're okay. Everything's fine. This is just a little rash. We're not going to worry about it. We're not going to do anything about it because everything is fine. Everything is good. Everything is fine. That's very much the Libra de Lulu disposition that we are all going to find ourselves in. But the sinuses, again, that third eye activation, we are having to kind of tap into these new psychic abilities that came online, even though we don't understand them as of yet. We don't really know what that means for us as of yet. You're going to feel hypersensitive to emotions, to thoughts, to energies. You're going to have uh, certain sensations come online that you're not used to. And, you know, where the air energy is just drying everything out it is definitely going to have a major impact on our physical form. We definitely want to stay hydrated, but even if you're chugging water, uh, I don't know that we are going to avoid a lot of the dryness that is definitely going to affect our, our sensory systems. I feel like um, there's going to be a lot of tingling going on, especially in our extremities, but even more specifically, I want to say our lower extremities. So tingling sensations, spasms, maybe tremors, maybe we have to understand that we are making a very huge, large jump from all the earth energy where we were very physically present in our bodies, very aware of our physical form. We're taking away that particular awareness, that particular focus, and we're moving all up into the headspace. And while we're doing that, we have no clue what's going on. We have no clue where we're going. We have no clue what we're doing. And therefore the tingling sensation, especially in the lower extremities, in our legs, in our knees, in our, you know, feet, that again is because we want to take action. We want to make moves. We want to take a step forward, but we don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing. We're just doing a cha-cha-cha back and forth and back and forth. We need to learn to enjoy ourselves in this state of confusion, in this state of not knowing. The tingly uh, parts of it is definitely where new energy, again, our feet connect with the earth. The earth has its own vibration and frequency. Our head, our crown connects with the higher realms of intelligence that has its own frequency as well. 
And we are the conduit. We're the, we're the channel of being able to take that energy in from the earth, allow it to kind of move through our bodies, kind of spit it out to the collective. And in the reverse of that, we're taking energy and thoughts and consciousness in from the collective. We're channeling it through our physical body. It goes down through our feet and back into the earth and we just regenerate. And we're trying to keep uh, this, you know, holding pattern of the higher vibrations and frequencies up. That being said, the tingly, you know, sensation, especially in our legs is due to the fluctuation. Cause again, yes, we're in labor season, but you know, the earth, mother earth, Gaia herself, she's trying to strike a better balance as well. She just had a major upgrade as well. She's going through a major change, a major transformation as well. And we are just along for the ride. So a lot of those sensations in our lower extremities is because we're moving out of a grounding point. Again, the less and less earth that we actually have in our chart and the more and more air that we have, we're less grounded, we're less connected, we're not channeling those energies correctly. We're holding a lot of fear about our future in our, you know, from our hips to the bottoms of our souls. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. We may have it in our arms. If you do find that you're having these tingly sensations in your arms, maybe your hands are falling asleep. Maybe, you know, your shoulder, you got frozen shoulder or, you know, there's a nerve issue there. If you are having it in your arms, I would say that you need to do a little bit better to unlock your palm chakras, meaning, you know, the energy is coming and trying to come out in your hands. Your hands are the creator energies. We are bringing the palm chakras online. There has been some injuries and some so slow progress, let's call it, in activating those particular palm chakras. Um, but if you're experiencing a lot of this tingling sensation in your arms, then you really have to understand that the energy blockages are probably around the shoulder and the neck because you're carrying a lot of the emotional and energetic weight that actually doesn't belong to you. And so again, because we're in labor season and we're really taking a good look at our relationship dynamics and where it is that again, we've backburnered our own wants, needs and desires to put the wants, needs and desires of other people at the forefront. Again, we have to adjust. We have to bring those scales back into balance. And we're going to realize that one part of our body, again, kind of going with the topic and theme of the scales, one part of our body is going to be stronger than the other. There's going to be weakness on one side of the body. Maybe we're only having these tingling sensations on one part of the body. Maybe it is the lower half versus the upper half. Maybe it's the right side versus the left side. Maybe it's the front side of your body versus the back side of your body. You're going to want to pay attention to where the energy is asking for your awareness first and foremost, because the division of Libra energy, we have to see the division within ourselves in order to kind of adjust the energetic scales, if you will, to bring those that division back into a place of harmony and balance and grounding. And of course, we merge those particular parts of division back into a state of wholeness once we move in to Scorpio season. We're definitely working through new surges of energy coming in not only from Mother Earth, but also coming in from the higher realms of intelligence from the cosmos. And so, you know, that's really going to have a little bit of a not so nice feeling in our physical form. It's going to feel very buzzy, like there's electricity, static electricity on the outside, electricity coursing through you on the inside, very buzzy in your head. Again, too many windows open, too many thoughts going on, too, too many options, too many different ideas, too many different perspectives. None of them actually have any solidified, you know, information, energy and details to actually support it at this time. We're just guessing. We're just surmising at this point, again, being eclipsed out from a lot of the truth, a lot of the matter of facts. So one thing that I want to also talk about when you think about Libra energy, think about, you know, like I just said about your physical body and how that's kind of divided up. We're also looking at everything that we have two of. And I want to start with the lungs. OK, lungs. There's there's two lungs. Um, and in an air energy, we're talking about breath. Okay. Breath work is going to be super essential moving through Libra season, especially while we're still under the influence of this eclipse energy as well. Breath work is absolutely essential in order for you to realize what you actually have power and control over, which essentially is only your breath. And so we're looking to expand our heart space. We talked about those heart activations. 
you know, breathing in, expanding those lungs to the maximum capacity, really feeling the energy, the chi, the prana, the air that you're bringing into your lungs and having a little bit more of an awareness on where it is that you've been a shallow breather because many people of us are and shallow breathing actually keeps you in an anxious state of anxiety. So we have to work on that breath work. We have to work on expanding our lungs, being able to take in deep breaths because of course, the more oxygen you bring in, the more air you bring in, the more oxygen you, you're providing to your brain the more your brain is acting more efficiently and more powerful, the more clarity and understanding you're going to have. And of course, that just benefits us and coming up with, you know, what we have to do, a plan, a strategy for our future selves. So, you know, Libra energy is hella creative as well. Air energy always is because it's in the head space. But Libra energy loves beautiful things, loves aesthetics, loves art, loves music, you know, all the things that make us feel a certain way and really bring a certain level of beauty into this physical realm. And so creative energy is huge coming in, although under the eclipse energy, I don't think it's going to be as clear as it needs to be in order for us to actually use a, an appropriate medium to bring it into life. So, you know, when we talk about like art, you know, the medium could be watercolors or it could be paint or it could be colored pencils. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in an art type of realm. Maybe you're just coming up with some creative solutions. Maybe you're taking a good look at your physical realm and seeing where the craziness, the chaos has ensued and where it is that you've come up with some creative solutions on how to stabilize those particular areas of life. Either way, we're not going to fully understand the capacity of this creativity, of this problem solving, uh, ingenious brilliance, if you will, until post eclipse season. And again, just a rundown for you. We're under the influence of the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy up until the 17th of October when we move into the full moon in Aries energy. We have the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy popping off October 2nd, and we will be under the influence of that until the new moon in Scorpio popping off on October 31st slash November 1st, depending on where it is that you're out in the world. But the fact that we're having a new moon in Scorpio around the Halloween gateway is very poetic all in itself. So we have a little bit of observation to do, a little bit of balancing to do, a little bit of exploration in our headspace and in our heart space to do. And we are preparing a plan, a strategy on how it is that we're going to move forward when gifted with the green light, go ahead. But let me just also remind you, the plans that you currently have are probably going to be totally derailed by the time eclipse season comes to pass and you are going to have to go back to the drawing board. So just when you think you know, nah, you don't know. But guess what? It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be just fine. Okay, guys, I'm taking a look at my list. I think I've talked about the things that I needed to talk about. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, for spending your time, your energy, not only with me, but everybody here in the chat. If you're here for the chat, if you're not just for the community in which we're building here on YouTube and on Patreon. I want to thank you so much, not only showing up for me, but showing up for yourself. I hope you have a beautiful Equinox experience. I hope you have a beautiful Libra season coming at you. I send you so much love and we'll talk to you soon.